morning, church. Stand and worship with us this morning. There is a river that flows unrestrained from your heart. Canyons of mercy so deep I could never depart. Father, your wonders are endless. Open my eyes to you, awake my soul. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord with all of my heart. With all of my strength, with all that I have, I will sing. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Morning by morning, your faithfulness shines like the sun. Heaven's on fire, alive with the brilliance of love. Father, your wonders are endless. Open my eyes to you, wake my soul. Let everything. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord let everything that has breath praise the Lord praise the Lord with all of my heart with all of my strength with all of I have I will sing let everything that has breath praise the Lord On our lips, we enter your courts today. All our lives we freely give, awaken my soul to pray. With thanksgiving, sing it out. With thanksgiving on our lips, we enter your courts today. All our lives we freely give, awaken my soul to pray. Everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. With all of my heart, with all of my strength, with all that I have, I will sing. Let everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Amen. Y'all may be seated. Christian Church, good morning. Welcome and happy Palm Sunday. You saw the awesome celebration of folks walking down this center aisle, waving their palms, placing them down here at the communion table as we use this Sunday as the inauguration of Holy Week celebrating the triumphant entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. And there's a whole mess of complexity going on when he rolls up into town. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit as we dig into the scripture. But I'm glad that however you make your way to worship today, in person or online, our gathering, our gathering of hearts and minds and spirits before the Lord to worship is of significance. And it binds us together as Christian community to share in these moments. And so uh, for the space in your life, and in your spirit and heart that you have created for these moments of worship. Um, I pray that you'll be blessed. 
I invite you to join me in a moment of prayer as we begin these, this time of praise together. God, we turn to you in these moments of worship. And we avail our hearts to the shaping power of your spirit. We turn to you in your goodness and in your mercy. We bring before you our praise and our thanksgiving. And we admit our deep need for your restorative grace. And so receive us as we bring ourselves as an offering before you. Bless these moments of worship as our voices are raised in song and as our hearts are gathered in prayer breaking the bread, sharing the cup, and bringing forth our own gifts in all of these manifestations of the order of worship. God, we long to come before you completely, to feel your presence, to be received in your fullness. Bless us in these moments that we share. This we pray in the name of your victorious son, Jesus. Amen. Desperate for hell. You know what it's like to be tired and only a shell of yourself. Well, you start to believe you don't have what it takes. Cause it's all you can do just to move, much less finish the race. But don't forget. What lies ahead Almost home Brother, it won't be long Soon all your burdens Will be gone With all your strength Sister, run wild, run free Hold up your head This road will be hard, but we win in the end, simply because of Jesus and us, it's not it, but where, so take joy in the journey, even when it feels long, find strength in each step, knowing heaven is carrying you on. Almost, almost. heaven to us make no mistake there's still more to come when our flesh and our bones are no longer between where we are right now and where we're meant to be when all that's been lost is made whole again when these tears and this pain no longer exist no more often we're running as fast as we can consider this our second way
sing it out. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the Church, good morning. Band, good morning. good morning. We are so happy to be led in worship by your music today. Thank you. Uh, this morning, we are in one of my favorite stories in Scripture and one of my favorite Scripture references because it's super easy to remember. So the uh, 11th chapter of Mark. If you want to always be able to look smart and know things about the Bible like that, Palm Sunday in Mark is Mark 11, 1 through 11. It's very easy to remember. Now, I don't have a biblically like uh, encyclopedia kind of brain. I forget all sorts of things that I should know, but my brain will not retain. And that's why I'm glad I have a week to write a sermon. Uh, 
But Mark 11, 1 through 11, tells Mark's story of Jesus uh, coming to town, setting into motion the events of Palm Sunday. And so we're going to hear these words right now. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden, untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it and we'll send it back, send it back here immediately. They went away and found the colt tied near the door outside the city street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing? Untying the colt? Then they told them what Jesus had said and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went on ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming king of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven! Then he entered Jerusalem. And he went into the temple, and when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. I have for years in my own note-taking been calling this Grand Theft Donkey. But, you know, developments in culture give you new mindsets about things, give you new visions and lenses through which to see. And so I've realized it's not really Grand Theft Donkey. They use someone else's donkey and then it goes back to the rightful owner. It's actually Livestock Uber. And, and it is just temporarily making use of somebody else's cult for your transportation needs. I don't know if the cult has the little sticker on it like an Uber car does, but... Uh, There's a lot happening here in this Grand Theft Donkey, this livestock library lending, if you will. It's just one of about a half dozen significant storylines in 11 verses that we just read. There's a bunch of notable things going on all at the same time. And it's all tied together by the faithful presence of Jesus. All of the things that are going on have in common the fact that Jesus chooses to show up to all of this mess. And we often can overlook the complexity of all of the different little things going on here. I mean, we call it Palm Sunday. We give the, we order the palms from the florist. The palms show up. Everybody waves them. We say, hallelujah. Blessed is one who comes in the name of the Lord. And then at the traditional service, we always sing all glory, loud and honor. It's just a rule. All right. This is Palm Sunday. And it's really easy for that like one little element of the story because it's so high profile to distract us from like the chaos that's unfolding here. This is like, this story is sort of like the multi-purpose room of High Holy Days. There's a lot going on all at once. My mom taught at a school that was much newer, like the building was much newer than the school I went to. So I went to a school that had a gym and a cafeteria and an auditorium. And then one time I went to her much newer school building and it had a cafetorium. I was like, I don't, what are you doing here? And it's just one room that does a whole bunch of things all at once. And autocaphanasium is my favorite version of that word. Right? A whole bunch going on all at once in one spot at the same time. And that's what goes on on Palm Sunday. If you pay attention to what's going on here, we kick it off with the obedience of the disciples as Jesus instructs them to head into town. And then they just waltz off with this cult as if it were theirs to take, like it's no big deal. Then Jesus rides into town in this very royal fashion. And then people start to freak out a little bit. The excitement builds. And they give him this warm Hosanna reception with branches and coats on the ground. Big deal. But then we also have this element of Jesus getting into the heart of town, getting into the temple, and he begins to see what's going on. And he takes a good long look around and a deep breath. And he knows what he's set into motion with his arrival into Jerusalem. And there's a lot going on. A lot of human experience going on. 
For however divine and mysterious and miraculous Easter in a week's time is going to be, just like this very sort of like, it can only be through the power of God that this like crazy thing happened. For however divine and mysterious and miraculous Easter is, Palm Sunday a week before sort of balances that out with the very human experience. It's extraordinarily human as we see kind of what goes on with the people. The Hosanna shouting, palm waving, coat spreading crowd is caught up in an excitement that's bigger than them. And they can't quite understand, they can't quite begin to know how the communal attitudes toward Jesus are going to begin to shift from Sunday as the week wears on. What those Hosanna voices are going to be saying in just a couple of days. Jesus seems to know what's going on. So you can imagine perhaps the confusion that's on Jesus' face as he rides into town and is greeted by these celebrating crowds. Hosanna? I can imagine Jesus being like, hey, I mean, I I appreciate the warm welcome, but you, you know why I'm here, right? Like you, have you been paying attention? I've been telling you what's gonna happen. But there's just this excitement. And still Jesus shows up. Jesus is faithfully present, despite just the, just the abject humanity and missing the point of it all. And that's, I think, what I love the most about Jesus, is his consistent, powerful showing up. He just is there. In the complexity of that day and all the things that are going on and the awkwardness of the attitudes that will so rapidly shift. I mean, that is going to be weird. And he shows up. When those who have followed him faithfully struggle to comprehend his message, knowing that Hosanna isn't going to last forever, He shows up. He is faithfully present in a situation that if we really took stock of everything that was going on is the kind of awkward most of us would find a way to get out of. And this is what I love about Jesus. This this is what I love of what we know of Jesus as Savior and Lord. All demonstrated in this incredible day on Palm Sunday is that He is just there It just shows up. He is not run off by our sin. He's not run off by our missing the point or our sometimes fading devotion. He shows up. And though the crowds will miss the point, and the crowds are going to suffer from fading devotion, Shifting allegiances, voices that on one hand cry Hosanna and on another are going to cry crucify him. There he is. He shows up on this day of complicated simultaneous events. Perhaps you need Jesus to show up. Perhaps you know what it is like to feel like you have missed the point. Or devotion has faded. Or the thing that you say, maybe you don't mean as deeply as it first came out. Maybe you need Jesus to show up. The incredible thing that we know about Jesus as Savior and Lord is His persistent, powerful presence and His persistent willingness to show up. Our sin can't run Him off. Our missed points can't run him off. Our faded devotion and our sort of ins and outs of faithfulness don't run Jesus off. And those crowds, even though they missed the point and their devotions faded and their hosannas turned into crucify, they were very right about one thing. And we celebrate it on this Palm Sunday. As their voices cry out, they continue to tell the story of a persistently faithful and present Jesus. Blessed is this one who has come in the name of the Lord. Whatever you are looking for, whatever it is, is the need of your heart, the longing of your spirit, 
the strength that seems to have faded. Trust in the faithfully present Christ who cannot be run off. Blessed is this one who comes to us in the name of the Lord. Amen. There is excitement in the air, and there is hope in the air in a world, in a time where we were really looking forward to that hope. We had it, and we're feeling it. You are invited to be a part of this faith community, this faith community that is consistent in love and even understands the complexities of life and is here for you. If you're uh, interested in joining First Christian Church of McKinney, we invite you to reach out to our church uh, office and contact either one of the pastors for a uh, more information. For those of you that are members, uh, your invitation matters. It matters to your friends and family, and we invite you to continue to share the good news um, and to reflect on your relationship with Christ. To the King of glory and light, all praises. To the only giver of life, our maker. The gates are open wide, we worship you. Come see what love has done, amazing. He bought us with his blood, our Savior. The cross has overcome, we worship you. Shout, Hosanna, Jesus he saves. Shout, Hosanna, heroes from the grave. Come and lift him up, Hosanna. Now let the lost be found, forgiven. Death could not hold him down, he's risen. So let the saints cry out, we worship you, we worship you. Shout, Hosanna, Jesus he saved. Shout, Hosanna, he rose from the grave. Come and lift him up, Hosanna. The same power that rolled the stone away, the same power alive in us today. King Jesus, we call upon your name, no other name. The same power that rolled the stone away, the same power alive in us today. Call upon your name, no other name. We shout, Hosanna, Jesus, he saved. Shout, Hosanna, he rose from the grave. Come and lift him up, Hosanna. Shout, Hosanna, Jesus, he saved. Shout, Hosanna, he rose from the Come and lift him up, Hosanna. Persistent and faithfully present Jesus makes himself known 
as the week of Holy Week continues to unfold, we'll find Jesus in an upper room, gathered with his disciples, faithfully present, not run off. And so we break bread and share the cup here in just a moment to tell that story again, to offer one another the reminder of the present Christ who is here with redemption and joy and life now and eternal. Friends, ready yourselves for this meal of communion at this open table that is for all who gather in the name and way of Jesus. Please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day of great joy and thanksgiving as you came into Jerusalem. But we are also humbled in the fact that we know the rest of the story. We know what happens at the end of this week, and so did you. Lord, we thank you for your perseverance and sticking to that story and seeing it through so that we may share in the grace of your love and eternal life. Lord, as we partake of this bread and this cup, help us to remember the suffering that you went through, but also the triumphant entry at the end when you conquered death. We thank you for your love and your grace. In your name we pray, amen. As we share in this meal, we recall the words of Jesus. And the experience of those gathered in the upper room toward the end of his life, as he took from the table while they were eating the bread. Blessing it and giving thanks for it, he broke it, passing it among them, saying, This is my body, take and eat. And he poured out the cup as well, sharing it with them in similar fashion, that this cup was his blood of a new covenant poured out for the forgiveness of sin. And so now we share in these tangible elements, reminding us of our new covenant eternal with God through Christ. All are welcome to taste this meal of life.
This community runs on gifts, gifts of talent. I wish I had that kind of talent. Gifts of time and financial gifts. And we thank you for all of the ways that you've given to this community. If you'd like to give financially and haven't yet already, you can uh, do so on our website at fccmckinney.org or there are some um, trays on your way out. Uh, we thank you for all the ways that you offer your time. And one of the other ways that we can share in our time together is praying for each other and praying for uh, members of our community and family and friends. And you can submit prayer, prayer requests on our, face, on our website as well. One of the prayer requests from our community that I want to lift up is uh, the family of our faithful church member, Dana Underwood, who passed this past week. Uh, there's a visitation for her on Thursday night, and there's a graveside service for her on Friday at 11 um, at Turntine Jackson Morrow. So uh, we continue to lift her family up in prayer. Let us go to God in prayer. Holy One. This morning, we celebrate your son, the king, riding in on a borrowed donkey. We sing Hosanna to you, celebrating your presence here on earth. This morning, we bring to you our celebrations, our celebrations in this springtime, but we also bring to you our sadness, our sadness that we feel in the darkness, through loneliness and sickness and grief. We bring to you our complexities and our failings, but knowing that that's, that's nothing for you, that nothing is too complex for you, that while our human experience might be weighted down, Nothing is too heavy for your power. We come to you this morning lifting up our church family and lifting up those around us that they can hear your word, feel your presence, that they may be set free. We come to you from many places and spaces worshiping you in this beautiful sunshine gathering as one, praying the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, as we are soon to depart from our time of worship with one another, I want to let you know about things going on outside of this Sunday morning time frame uh, that we are going to want to have on your calendar as part of the life of the church 
Today is the last day if you want to uh, buy an Easter lily to decorate our worship spaces for next Sunday. You can do that online through the church's website um, on the giving tab. There's an option to do that there in memory or in honor of somebody and it'll help beautify this room and the church sanctuary uh, for next Sunday's worship gathering. I want to make sure that everybody knows that summer is soon to be upon us and Vacation Bible School has been set um, for June 21 through 25. We are going to have a marvelous time. We have made some adaptations to the ways that we're going to do it, but it is going to happen and it is going to be fun and God will be praised. And so put that week of June 21 through 25 on your calendar uh, for volunteers and for young folks in your life. I want to remind you, too, that this summer we're going to have church camp going on out at Disciples Crossing in Athens, Texas. And so registration is available. If you have questions, contact Reverend Wright, contact myself. Uh, it's a little bit different system. Like, everything is a little bit different system right now uh, for how camp is going to happen. But it is going to happen, and many of us are very grateful for that. And so we want our uh, young folks to go to camp if given the opportunity. Uh, if you are here today, I want to remind you that if in the next seven days you experience symptoms or diagnosis of COVID-19, to please let us know in the church office so that we can do any appropriate contact tracing. We have had a slight change to our uh, gathering time protocol in light of COVID-19. The, the real notable change is that we're no longer taking temperatures at the door as we've been surveying recommendations from health officials, etc. We will continue to wear masks for the time being, vaccinated or not. Um, and we appreciate everybody's um, cooperation as we try to have the safest, healthiest worship gatherings we can uh, and manage all of these competing elements. Uh, through the rest of this week, please be aware of the opportunity to worship and to grow closer to God with one another through the experience of Holy Week. On Thursday, April 1st, we will gather uh, online and in person for Monday Thursday service at 7 p.m. And so we hope that if that is a time that you are available, that you will join us online or in person as we retell the experience of Jesus in that upper room with his disciples. On Friday, uh, April 2nd is Good Friday, there will be an online-only meditation that will be uh, broadcast at noon, and it will then be available on the church's Facebook page following that. And so we encourage you to make use of that. Um, finally, one week from today, uh, we make our way toward the celebration of Easter. We'll have our usual services at 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock, both online and in person. This is a fabulous opportunity to invite someone to worship, especially online. Like, that's super easy and non-threatening if they're not a real church person, but you think, man, I think they would love what we do here. Send the little link. It's not a big deal to you, but it'll be a huge deal to somebody who could be impacted by the ministry that we do and our proclamation of the good news of Jesus Christ. And so we encourage your invitation uh, this Sunday and all Sundays. Friends, go from this place, wherever you find yourself, ready to love and serve the Lord, confident in the faithful presence of Jesus, who we cannot run off, and despite our sin and fading devotion and ins and outs of life, he is here. He is present and is for you. Blessed is this one who comes to us in the name of the Lord. Go in peace, y'all. Are you disappointed? Are you desperate for hell? You know what it's like to be fired and only a shell of you start to believe you don't have what it takes cause it's all you can do just to move much less finish the race but don't forget what lies ahead almost hope brother it won't We win in the end. Soon 
only because of Jesus in us. It's not it, but when. So take joy in the journey. Heaven, let it feel long. Find strength in each step, knowing heaven is cheering you on. We're almost home, brother, it won't be long. Soon all your burden will be gone. With all your strength, sister, run heaven to us make no mistake there's still more to come when our flesh and our bones are no longer between where we are right now and where we're meant to be when all that's been lost is made whole again when these tears and this pain no longer exist no more walking we're running as fast as we can consider this our second way. 